How's it going everyone? It is Ryder here, back again with another Nintendo Direct discussion. On June 18th, Nintendo released a brand new Nintendo Direct, and man oh man, was the community taken by complete shock, especially me. The way Nintendo handled this entire Direct was quite insane, and I loved every bit of it, despite some weird and odd announcements there and there. Since this Direct was so hype, let's just dive into discussing some of the games announced that got me hyped, and some that I just feel the need to talk about. Nintendo started off this direct with an insane banger. We finally got a new game announced for the Mario & Luigi series, known as Brothership. It's been 9 years since the last game, but I could've sworn it was longer than that. The game itself looks very promising from what we've seen so far. It dives into more of a 3D perspective rather than the 2D pixel perspective we're used to within the series. And honestly, that's really damn cool for a franchise like this. I wonder if they plan on making this a co-op experience as well, which would be very cool to see, and I kinda hope they give us that option. Even if they don't, I won't be bothered by it. Not much story-wise was revealed, but this game is shaping up to be another banger for the Mario & Luigi series. Still blows my mind how they just revealed this game right off the bat, especially considering how many people in the community have been begging for a new game for years. Nintendo World Championships NES Edition did make a small appearance in the Direct, and I'm still quite hyped for it. All they basically showed for it was a more deeper dive into the aspect of speedrunning games, and showing off a hint section that you can use to your own advantage. Other than that, it was basically just information we already knew just being thrown in as a reminder. I'm debating on whether or not this will be a day one purchase for me, but I really cannot wait for the Deluxe Edition set, which I will definitely be going after. <sighs> Nintendo Switch Sports. This game was a, a game that exists for some reason. I forgot it existed before this Direct randomly decided to announce a brand new basketball update, which sort of looks mediocre, I'm not gonna lie. This game has been dead for like, what, two years now and they randomly decided to just update it like it's brand new? This isn't really gonna keep me attached to the game, Nintendo. These free updates that they've been doing recently feels like updates that they were just too lazy to finish at the start and are randomly just throwing them out there now. Cool for those who have wanted basketball, but if they really wanted to intrigue me into going back and playing the game, they really should have added baseball. I think most would agree with me on that, but like I said, cool that the game is getting a random free update later this summer, even though no one asked for it. Alright, this game has gotten me going insanely nostalgic. Donkey Kong Country Returns is coming back with a HD remaster, and holy moly is it looking fantastic. I am a huge fan of Returns, and it is in fact my favorite Donkey Kong game out there. I have wanted a HD port so badly and I'm very pleasantly surprised it actually happened. I made a post on Twitter a few years ago stating that we should get a HD port of this game on the Nintendo Switch, and it's very crazy to think it's actually a reality now. It looks like they've updated DK and Diddy's fur to match up with what's used in Tropical Freeze, which is a nice touch. It looks like the game itself will be running at 60fps, but the cutscenes are still locked at 30fps from the looks of it, which is totally fine. I can't be the only one who is just obsessed with this game, right? This game was a big part of my childhood, and I still have the Wii and 3DS port to this day. Speaking of the 3DS port, it turns out they're adding the exclusive 3DS stages into the enhanced port for the Switch, which is going to be so freaking awesome. Too bad we've got to wait until January for this game to release, but there's a whole big catalog of games coming out within the later half of 2024 that I think I'll be busy and just be patient until then. Luigi's Mansion 2 HD was just kind of there in the direct to remind people it exists and is releasing later this month, which makes sense to do. But this game is still looking quite rough and is hella overpriced. It's disappointing that a remaster of such a great 3DS game is just kind of being thrown out there and nothing is really being added in terms of graphical updates or even higher frame rate. While 30fps isn't bad in my opinion, it is kind of strange that they couldn't get a 3DS game to run at 60fps. I'm not sure if the original game was able to, but that quite frankly doesn't matter since this is the Nintendo Switch we're talking about. I think what would have made this game way better for its value is having Luigi's Mansion 1 included within the package. That would only make sense, but it's Nintendo Know they love having some weird decisions sometimes. It is going to be a little strange seeing only the second and third games on the Switch, and not having the game that started the franchise on the same console, but who knows if they'll add it at some point later in the future for a separate release. As per usual, we got some more games added to the N64 and GBA Online applications. We got a new Zelda game added as well as a Metroid game added for the GBA Online side of things. The N64 side got some interesting additions to say the least which are games both rated M. I've never heard of these two, and I'm quite intrigued on playing them since they look insanely fun. Also, they're apparently making a new app dedicated for the 17 plus games, which is 
definitely interesting. <laughs> Other than that, there wasn't anything else announced for the NSO. Now here's where we get to the good shit. Finally, some new Mario Party news. I've waited years for some sort of DLC announcement for Superstars, and unfortunately we never got that for some strange reason. But hey, a brand new Mario Party got announced, and this is quite literally the most exciting announcement from the Direct for me. This time around, it seems to be somewhat of a sequel to Super Mario Party considering what the title suggests, which did concern me at first. The game forced you to use Joy-Cons, which I never liked being forced to use in games, and the boards in Super were quite lackluster. All of them are very flat with not much of anything going on. I will give the game props though for having an enormous selection of minigames, and mostly all of them are really good. The game also featured the most characters we've ever seen in a Mario Party at the time it was released as well. Other than that though, it was forgotten after the release of Superstars, and I never tend to revisit it. Now with this new game coming out, it essentially takes the best parts of both Super Mario Party and Superstars and creates a nice and fun looking experience. We finally have a huge roster of characters to choose from again, and some really damn good looking boards. As far as I'm aware, it seems we have a little over 20 characters to choose from, and possibly some we can unlock like Ninji and Charging Chuck. We are going to have 7 boards in total, which thank god it's a huge amount. 5 of those are brand new, and the other 2 are retro boards from previous Mario Party games. The 5 new ones are looking fantastic as hell. The first one shown was Rainbow Galleria, which looks to be the coconut mall of Mario Party. And I've gotta say, this board is the one I'm most excited to play on. It's got so many pathways and a very intriguing scenery. It's also a very large map, which you'll see a lot with these new boards. The second board shown was Rollum Raceway, which you could tell was heavily inspired by Mario Kart. This board looks to feature a special mechanic with cars. N no, not those cars. Brand new ones. I am interested on whether this will make the board more fun or not, as it'll let you roll like 4 dice blocks per turn with the newly added turbo dice item, which is quite insane. The third board shown was Goomba Lagoon. This one looks like it takes inspiration from the older Mario Party boards, as some spaces on the board can cause other sections to be completely different, which can screw up another person's pathway, or even yours. I think this will lead to some very interesting outcomes. As for the other two new boards, we didn't really get to see any info on them, which I guess makes sense because they probably want to save them for a bigger sized trailer. We did however get the names of these boards, being King Bowser's Keep and Mega Wiggler's Tree Party. Yes, we finally got a new Wiggler board after not seeing any new ones since DS. I am curious on how the King Bowser's Keep board will work, since Bowser is on that board, but he's also a playable character. So are they just not gonna let people play as him on that board? As for the two returning boards, we've got Mario's Rainbow Castle from Mario Party 1 and Western Land from Mario Party 2. Western Land was one of my favorite boards back in the N64 era, so I'm quite excited for that one. As for Mario's Rainbow Castle, I do not have many distinct memories of it, so it'll basically be a new experience for me. I do gotta wonder though if these two retro boards were originally intended to be in Superstars, since like I said, there was a ton of DLC potential with that game, and this would only make sense, right? They feel a little out of place here, but I don't mind. This also could just be the new norm for future Mario Party games going forward. I'm curious about what you all think. There were a few mini games shown. They didn't give specific names on the mini games nor any info on them. They just sort of showed them off for about 15 seconds and that was it. There is however going to be over 110 mini games, which is insane because if they're all new, that's quite a lot. If some of them are retro mini games, I will still be just as happy regardless. Also, they did announce an online mode for the game, which looks fun and having 20 players is definitely crazy, but I do think it's strange how this game might not have online multiplayer with the regular boards. They didn't mention it in the direct, so I'm not sure what is going to happen there, but I sure do hope we'll have that on release and not need to wait like a few months or years to get an update on it. Overall, this game was definitely the big highlight of the Nintendo Direct for me. I do have small concerns here and there, thanks to Super Mario Party's logo being in the title, but I do have full confidence that it'll be an amazing Mario Party. I suspect I'll be making more videos on this title in the near future. I've never been the biggest fan of Zelda games, but this new one that was announced looks really damn cool. I can always admire the look of a Zelda game any day, and seeing this one take lots of inspiration from both Link's Awakening and Princess Peach Showtime was really awesome to see. The game looks like it plays very similar to how Link's Awakening played, considering the art style and the look the trailer gave us for the game. Showtime was Peach's first standalone game in quite some time, and she has her little companion with her throughout the entire game. Pretty sure Nintendo got inspiration from that game, and put something similar into the Legend of Zelda universe, 
because now we are finally able to play as Zelda in a game, and we have our own little companion to journey with throughout the game. Besides the game being announced, they also announced a brand new Switch that will be released alongside the game in September, which has a sleek gold cover with the iconic Zelda icon. I'm excited to see more news on this game in the future, and I might even just pick up Link's Awakening before then, since I still do not have it. I haven't seen other content creators really talk about Stray being announced for the Nintendo Switch, which makes me sad because I love cats, and this game looks like a lot of fun to play. I've been planning on buying this game for Steam for years now, but just haven't been able to due to all the games I own and are still trying to 100%. Seeing as it's now coming to the Switch is really cool, and the graphics took me by quite the surprise. I thought when this game was first announced in the Nintendo Direct that it would look kind of ugly, but somehow the studio behind the port really outdid themselves on making sure the game doesn't look awful and can run at a stable frame rate. I might actually go and give this game a shot on the Nintendo Switch version once it releases. Now this announcement right here took the internet by storm. Metroid Prime 4 has finally gotten an official trailer that wasn't just a logo reveal. In fact, we got to see some of the actual gameplay and cinematics too. The graphics are superb, the gameplay looks flawless, and the animation looks outstanding. The team behind this game really outdid themselves, and I'm not at all surprised it looks this freaking good considering how long it took to develop. It wasn't a super long look at the game, but hey, any bit counts, especially for a game like this. Prime 4 Beyond alongside DK will be released sometime in 2025, which makes me wonder if this will be one of the launch titles for the next console. Or it could be a cross-gen release, similar to how Breath of the Wild was when it first released. It could also explain the amount of details put into the graphics and how flawless it is running. I'm very excited to see more news on the game, but man, what a way to end off this Nintendo Direct. This Direct sure was filled with a ton more surprises than I think any of us were expecting. I knew once when the first announcement showed up with a brand new Mario & Luigi game, all hell was about to break loose within the rest of the event. And boy, I was right, but was definitely not expecting to see as many banger announcements as I saw. This might just be one of the best Nintendo Directs we've ever had in my opinion. So many great games announced that there is basically something for everyone to enjoy. And that's the best kind of Nintendo Directs to have. Knowing also that this is probably the last main Direct we'll have for the Nintendo Switch is quite sad to also think about. But I am very happy that Nintendo ended off the lineup of games on the system with insane bangers. Thank you all so much for watching the video. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and comment below of your thoughts on the June 2024 Nintendo Direct. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out, stay safe, and goodbye.